Hello, welcome to our midweek prayer service. I hope this will be a time of encouragement for you. I don't know your situation. I know that this whole thing that we're having to do is getting pretty old and wearing on some of you, especially if you're alone. And uh, we just pray that God would just encourage your heart. And I wanted to share a few verses with you. Uh, Romans 8, 28, a very familiar verse. But before I do, I want to read something from the, this is by Walter Meyer in Decision Magazine. It's a, a quote uh, used in another book of illustrations. But I thought it was a good, good illustration that not everything that we consider as bad is bad. It might turn out to be something good, even though we may not understand at the time. A shipwrecked man managed to reach an uninhabited island, there to protect himself against the elements and to safeguard the few possessions he had salvaged, he painstakingly built a little hut from which he constantly and prayerfully scanned the horizon for the approach of a ship. Returning one evening after a search for food, he was terrified to find the hut completely enveloped in flames. Yet, by divine mercy, this hard affliction was changed into a mighty advantage. Early the following, following morning, he awoke to find a ship anchored off the island. When the captain stepped ashore, he explained, We saw your smoke signal and came. Everything the maroon man was had owned had to be destroyed before he could be rescued. Do you feel like you at the end of your rope? Like you can't take it anymore? Then, then turn to the Lord. Look to the Lord for encouragement. In fact, we have encouragement from Scripture in Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called, are the called according to his purpose. If you are a believer tonight, you, I'm sure you love God, you're called according to his purpose for his glory. Salvation is just not for us, even though it benefits us, but it's for God's glory. It shows who he is, it demonstrates that he is the God of salvation and he loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. There again is another illustration of something that was awful and terrible, but it turned out for our good that we could be saved. And it also shows us who God is and his love for us. And it, it brings him glory when we come to him in repentance and confess our sins and, and ask him for salvation. And we're transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And I'm sure that this time that we're going through will have some many positive benefits. In fact, for us, uh, we can't meet, but as many have testified, if you've looked around and, and seen pastors on churches, they've commented on the fact that they have a far greater reach now that they are putting their sermons online and, and people can access them. So not everything that's happening is bad. In fact, it can be very good. So I, I'm going to pray and, and, and uh, pray for you and uh, just pray that God would help you to see some of the bright spots that are there. They're there if we look hard enough. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your many, many blessings. Father, I thank you that you tell us in your word that all things work together for the good, for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And Father, we know that as a child of God, uh, you are working all things together for our good. They may not be good in their, themselves. We may not see the good, but they, they can work out good things for your glory. And Lord, we just pray that we would look for those bright things, for those things that, that you're doing. And Lord, we just 
thank you in these things. We may not be able to thank you for the things because people are dying. People are being put through hardships. Some are losing their jobs or have lost their jobs. Their income is failing. Lord, we, we pray for them. We pray for them during the hardship. We pray for those that are having procedures or have had procedures. We pray for their healing. Lord, we pray for encouragement for those that are lonely. We pray for those that probably have been, had too much of each other in a close-knit environment. Lord, we pray that through these things that they will work out differences, that they would learn to love each other, that they would learn to humble themselves and to serve one another. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you that you hear our prayers because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For those of you that are wondering about when we may start back service, we have looked at that. We're carrying on conversations about that. The difficult thing is that, according to our governor, he still has a shelter-in-place uh, order. He has a shelter in place order for those who are the high risk category, over 65, immune compromised, heart disease, and other things fit into that category, diabetes. And most of us in our church fits there. Our, your safety is our uh, utmost concern. And we do not want to put you at risk or prematurely come together. I think that we need to look at what happens with some of these loosening the rules and allowing some folks and businesses to open. We ought to look and see if there's any spike in, in, in new cases. The danger, I know a lot of you've compared this virus to the flu and you say, well, not as many people have died from this as the flu. Well, that's good. The difficult thing is that many people that may have it are not showing symptoms and they can spread it. And they can spread it to those who are vulnerable, which is most of our congregation. So given that fact, we want to protect all of us. And so we just are going to err on the side of caution. It, if we err on the side of caution on the I like to make a mistake on the safe side. When I have a decision, I don't know which way to go. I look at which one is going to be more costly if, if that's the way it goes. If we get together and, and some folks die, you know, that's a costly decision. If we don't get together and we continue online, more people will hear the gospel. And uh, I believe that that would be the best decision. So, Pray for us as, as we make those decisions. I know some of you really want to get back together, and I do too. Nobody wants to get together as much as I do. But I surely don't want to risk your health, and I don't want to risk your life. So just keep that in mind and, and, and pray for us. Not everybody agrees, and I understand that. But we have to make the decisions that we think are best for everybody. So thank you and, and have a good week and, and may God bless you.